Om Gyanatmi Randhasya Gyananjana Shalaka Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Alas, how shall I take shelter of one more merciful than he who granted the position of mother to a she-demon, Putana, although she was unfaithful and she prepared deadly poison to be sucked from her breast. Purport. Here is an example of the extreme mercy of the Lord even to his enemy. It is said that a noble man accepts the qualities of a person of doubtful character just as one accepts nectar from a stock of poison in his babyhood. He was administered deadly poison by Putana, a she-demon who tried to kill the wonderful baby. And because she was a demon, it was impossible for her to know that the Supreme Lord, even though playing the part of a baby, was no one less than the same Supreme Personality of Godhead. His value as the Supreme Lord did not diminish upon his becoming a baby to please his devotee Yashoda. The Lord may assume the form of a baby or a shape other than that of a human being, but it doesn't make the slightest difference. He is always the same Supreme. A living creature, however powerful he may become, by dint of severe penance, can never become equal to the Supreme Lord. Lord Krishna accepted the motherhood of Putana because she pretended to be an affectionate mother allowing Krishna to suck her breast. The Lord accepts the least qualification of the living entity and awards him the highest reward. That is the standard of his character. Therefore, who but the Lord can be the ultimate shelter? This verse is often cited as the example of Krishna's mercy. There are unlimited examples of Krishna's mercy. But particularly this is uh, mentioned. Srila Prabhupada describes. Here is an example of the extreme mercy. <laughs> extreme. How, how far do you go in being merciful? Extreme mercy. That someone comes to kill someone else and you award them the highest possible position no rancor no, no malice Krishna's mercy <coughs> Krishna there's his very nature to be merciful generally said power corrupts then how corrupt should Krishna be is so powerful. But power only corrupts if there's corruption in the heart. If there's not corruption in the heart, then the, it's not that the power corrupts, it just gives the opportunity for someone to be corrupt. Mm -hmm. someone. Uh, there's a saying that you can understand a person's character by how he deals with people from whom he has nothing to gain. And that's even more so if someone has the opportunity to dominate others. Uh, some people, if they get a position of power, they deliberately uh, crush them just to take pleasure. This is a demoniac attitude. But Krishna is completely pure. So even though he has all power, he uses that for the benefit of others, not for the destruction of others. Another example of how uh, power doesn't corrupt is Srila Prabhupada. He had such power. He'd, he'd tell his disciple, you go here, you go there. Uh, they were willing to do, just on his order. But he never exploited that or misused it. He wouldn't expect it. Hare Krishna. One thing, you've got your beads, not exactly on the floor, but where the feet are put, which is equivalent, is it not? So Krishna, he's so merciful even to the non-devotee. 
not only non-devotee, there are categories of non-devotees, out and out demon. So how merciful we can expect him to be to his devotee. But then again we shouldn't think, well I'm a devotee so Krishna will be merciful. But there is also, we find in the nectar of devotion, one of the symptoms of Bhava Bhakti is Ashabandha, expecting Krishna's mercy. But thinking oneself unqualified, I'm not qualified, but somehow or other I'm hoping for the mercy of Krishna. And this is the qualification to get it. If we think that, well, I'm very qualified, I've been chanting 64 rounds for the last few years and definitely I'm going to get Krishna's mercy. Then we're not going to get it. <laughs> if we think we're qualified, then there's no need for mercy anyway, because mercy comes to those who are not qualified. Dine re adhik daya kare bhagavan. In Chaitanya Charitamrita it stated that Bhagavan is most merciful to the fallen. And Kulin Pandit Dhani Bara Abhima, those who are very, uh, those who have very high birth, those who are very learned, those who are very wealthy, they tend to be very puffed up also. <laughs> you don't get Krishna's mercy. That famous uh, story is there of the uh, Brahmana who well, actually there are two stories of proud Brahmanas that Srila Prabhupada told. One is of the Brahmana who thought he was very pure and he uh, saw the prostitute, he thought she was very impure but he didn't go back to Godhead and she did because he's thinking I'm very qualified, I'm very pure and the prostitute thought that somehow or other I'm in this situation. I wish I could be pure like the Brahmin. Anyways, somehow I may get Krishna's mercy. And she did. Now, of course, it's not recommended to be a prostitute. It's recommended to be a Brahmin. But then one should be pure in heart, not just in uh, external show. One may follow all the activities of a Brahmin and have all all the uh, rings in the ears and the big shika tied up and chant all the mantras but if one is not pure in heart then there's no meaning to that another story of the proud another another proud brahman is the one who uh, Narad Muni saw him when Narad was on the way to Vaikuntha and he also saw a cobbler Kabla, the Brahmana is called Shuchi, very pure, and the Kabla is called Muchi. That's the word for a Kabla, means very impure. Hmm? Because he he deals with uh, skins of animals, mostly cow skin. So it's very impure profession. <clears throat> There's a saying that. Uh, Muchi hoi, uh, muchi hoi ya shuchi hoi jadi Krishna bhajan. That a cobbler becomes pure if he worships Krishna. But <coughs> shuchi hoi ya, muchi hoi ya jadi Krishna tajan. But one who is supposed to be pure, if he gives up the service of Krishna, <coughs> then he becomes degraded. So this, uh, Narad came back. Uh, they both asked. Well, the, the cobbler asked that you're going to now, you're going to see Narayan. Oh, how wonderful! How very nice. So when you when you come back, you please ask Narayan how many more millions of birth times I have to take before I can go to him. And the Brahmin said, well, you just remind Narayana I'm coming. And you should have all the band ready and can wash my feet when I come in. Uh, so, Narad went to Vaikuntha and he asked, how many lifetimes? Uh, that, that, oh, that Brahmin, he's coming. He told me to have the brass band ready and everything. And Narayana said, ah, he's not coming. 
He won't come for millions of births. And then the cobbler, he also asked, when is how many millions of births? No millions of births. He's coming this. He said, how is that? The pure Brahmin is that? Always chanting mantras and leading a very pure life, and the cobbler's dealing with cow skins. And so Narayan said that, well, you tell both of them when you go back that when you came to see me, I was putting an elephant through the eye of a needle. Then you'll find out why. So he went back, Narad went back, he saw the uh, saw the Brahmana and said that so did you tell Narayan to have all reception ready for me, everything and Narayan said yes, yes I told him but uh, he said you're not coming for many millions of lives said, ah, you never went to see Narayan, you don't know what you're talking tell me what was he doing oh, he was putting an elephant through the eye of a needle ah, what rubbish <laughs> you're, just a, you're just one of those bogus sadhus I can understand yeah, get out of here so, Narad went on to the cobbler, and the cobbler said, Oh, you've been to see Narayan, you're so fortunate. Tell me, what was that beautiful Lord doing? He said he was putting an elephant to the eye of meat. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. Our Lord is so wonderful, putting an elephant to the eye of a needle. And Narad said, ah, Do you really believe that? Of course. Uh, how? Because it seems uh, impossible to put an elephant through the eye of a needle. He said, no, of course. Uh, Darayan can do what he likes. You see, I'm sitting under this banyan tree, huge tree, and each, this banyan tree comes out of a tiny seed. Have you seen it? It's actually a very small, it's within a pod, a tiny, tiny seed. So if you can put a huge banyan tree inside a tiny seed, then you can put an elephant through the eye of it. Then now it understood that why the Brahmana wasn't going. Because he didn't have faith. He was puffed up. He thought, I know everything by my own brain. And the cobbler, he was uh, pure in heart and humble enough to uh, believe. He didn't put his mind in between Krishna and himself. And from the beginning his attitude was very humble. So he got the mercy of Krishna. Whereas the Brahmin, despite doing so many activities, didn't get the mercy. So bhakti is dependent on mercy. Mm. The formula are there by which we can develop in devotional service. But ultimately we're depending on the mercy of Krishna. It's not, there's no formula. People say, well, how long do you have to be a devotee before you can see Krishna, or become pure, or go back to Godhead? It can be in a moment, or it can take many millions of lifetimes. And ultimately it depends on Krishna. But of course Krishna, his mercy, he reciprocates with our desire. Otherwise, it's, it's not a matter of learning shlokas or even, mm, even following sadhana. Now, of course, that is the process given by Krishna. Uh, we say, well, we want the mercy of Krishna. Well, he's given it in the form of the process by which we can approach it. That's his mercy. So, if we, I want the mercy. But, but the pro, he's given the process to attract his mercy. Otherwise, if we say, well, I'm just going to sit here and wiggle my toes and wait for the mercy of Krishna. Well, that's like expecting a an honorary degree. You may hear someone got an honorary degree and you think, well, I'll get an honorary degree too. I'll just sit here and wait for them to give me an honorary degree. It doesn't happen like that. That happens to exceptional people who have they've done something exceptional and as uh, in recognition of that they're given on a, an honorary degree so it the, the general process is that one should follow sadhana which is based on hearing and chanting and in this way associate with devotees bhaktis to bhagavad bhaktas sangena parijarati bhakti comes about by association with devotees.
Ah, that's the general process. And then Krishna, he sees, oh, this person is very serious, very humble, and give the mercy. But he's not obliged to, that's the point. But then if we think, I'll get an honorary degree, well, it may be that someone who doesn't follow very strict sadhana, but he's uh, very dedicated, working hard to serve Krishna, mm. so he may get an honorary degree. You'll get Krishna's mercy by his sincere attitude to serve Krishna. But, but that, that, even that, we shouldn't take it as an excuse. Well, I'm working hard, so I don't have to follow. That, there may be some cases. Just like uh, one of Srila Prabhupada's dis- disciples, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, uh, he, were, he, came, he was, came from Bengal to Vrindavan, to Krishna Balaram temple, and he cooked for the Krishna Balaram, Radha Shamsam, Gornitai, literally from morning till night, every day. And the boy said, well, when do you, when do you chant your rounds? He said, that I said to Prabhupada, I don't have time to chant my rounds. Prabhupada said, anyway, you cook morning till night. So he didn't chant rounds, but morning till night he was engaged. That's not an instruction for everyone. He had that special dispensation to push the Krishna Swami. He was Swami at the time. He also told Prabhupada that Prabhupada, I'm so busy in your service. He was Prabhupada's personal assistant. I don't have time to try 16 rounds. And Srila Prabhupada told him that, anyway, you just stay with me and I will maintain you in your spiritual life, even if you don't chant 16 rounds. Hmm. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't. He didn't stay with Prabhupada and then he uh, left sannyas. But anyway, he went on and he's still a devotee. But the, the, the point is that the idea was that that Prabhupada, he'll just maintain you in that way. So that may be an honorary degree, but the, the general process for everyone is that follow sadhana and preach and do other services also. And this is the process to get the mercy of Krishna. But this point is to be understood that devotional service, devotional and devotion means Krishna's mercy, getting Krishna's mercy. It's not a matter of how many shlokas we know, or how rigidly we follow, or how many austerities we perform, or anything else. Now, again, we shouldn't think that we don't have to perform austerities, we don't have to learn shlokas, but we have to, the attitude, that's the important thing. Srila Prabhupada writes in his preface to the Nectar of Instruction, that advancement in Krishna consciousness depends on the attitude of the follower. So the attitude should be that even if one is most qualified, one should think oneself unqualified. And the great example of that is Rupa Goswami, who wrote, uh, I don't remember now, Srila Prabhupada quoted that many times. He said, I, I, I'm, I don't have any qualities. I'm not born in a high family. I don't practice any austerities. Uh, I, I, don't, I have no knowledge. But anyway, I'm just waiting for your mercy. Waiting for Krishna's mercy. Bhakti no Thakur. Who could be more qualified in devotional service than him? But he prays, Jogata Bhichare Kichuna Hipai, Tomara Karunasha. If one thinks, if I examine my qualifications, I find zero. But I'm simply depending on your mercy. <coughs> So you may think, well, uh, that's not where you see it. There's the case of the Brahmana, he's very strictly following, doing his pujas and everything. But that's not fair. That, that there's someone we have in Shastra saying that the Brahmana's position is very high, the cobbler's position, dealing with cow skin is very low. Uh, it, it, it should, the, the Shastra means the, the law is given by God. Dharmang to, what is that? Dharmang to Sakshat Bhagavad Pranita. So he's given the law, then he should administer the law. Justice. 
not just. How is the how is the cobbler going back to Godhead and not the Brahmin? It's not justice. You see, the Brahmin's following everything he has to do. The cobbler, he's not even qualified for that. He's only qualified for dealing in cow skins. But Krishna is independent. <laughs> Bhakti is independent. The laws are there to help us. They're not there to restrict Krishna. That you can't do this, you can't do that. Krishna is above the law. Mercy means that even if someone is unqualified, they're still given that which is meant for those who are qualified. It's not that we should all become <coughs> rebellious against the rules of devotional service or not follow them and say, ah, I don't believe in all these rules, I just want mercy. No, the rules are there, but Krishna, he can make special cases as he likes. Actually, we, everyone's a special case. In Krishna's eyes, Krishna sees everyone as special, especially his devotees. So, uh, the, whole, the whole meaning of mercy is that it goes beyond justice. Justice sees what is the qualification. What is, what is this? As Srila Prabhupada often gave the example, that the high court justice, in one case, he may close the, okay, place settled, this person gets uh, $10 million. The next person comes in, fi finishes the case, settles the case, okay, this person is sent to the electric chair. So what is it? Is he, is he being uh, partial? One person he gives $10 million, the others he sends for execution. No, he's simply administering the law. That's all. And the person who's sent to the electric chair, he may make a mercy plea. You be, in the, in the, in the mercy plea means that actually, uh, okay, I'm guilty, so I deserve the punishment, but anyway, you can be merciful. Uh, but, uh, of course, in Vedic culture, it's understood that the mercy of the king on a murderer is to administer him capital punishment. That is the mercy. Otherwise, if he lives, then he has to suffer much more in future. In some cases, capital punishment is required. That's a bit of a controversial subject. Maybe not in Texas. And probably this is one of the main, I would guess, it's one of the main execution states. Mm. <clears throat> but uh, maybe in other states uh, they're against it, is it? Hmm? Maybe more execution in Texas. More execution is probably than any other state, I would think, yeah. Well, what do you expect? They're killing so many cows also. So mm -hmm. killing is part of the, the great macho Texan way of life. So... <clears throat> There's justice, and then there's mercy. The mercy that was given to Putana. She didn't deserve to get the position of a nurse. Dhatru Chitam. She was Asadvi. <laughs> we don't hear this word, but we hear the word Sadvi. That is a common word. It means, uh, in Vedic culture, it, it, it that term is actually used for a faithful wife, but it's sometimes used for female sadhus. But in Vedic culture, there isn't really a female sadhu. Jains, they have sadhvis. Uh, it's the female form of the word sadhu. But uh, women are not supposed to become sannyasis or any such thing. So that is applied. The word sadhvi is applied to a woman who is very faithful uh, to her husband. She's called Sandri. Pati Vrata Nari. There are other terms. Also. So the word Asadvi. <laughs> Just the opposite. Uh, Krishna is the father, mother, Pitaham, Pitaham Asya Jagata, Matadhata. Pitamaha. Krishna is the father, mother, grandfather of everyone in the universe and and Putana wanted to kill Krishna. 
So she's asadri. She's just the opposite of being a, a uh, saintly woman. It's about as unsaintly as you could become. To want to kill children, and especially if the child is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Of course, killing children is a uh, part of life in the modern world, in most countries. If you kill it, as soon as the child comes out of the womb, if you kill the child, people think that's terrible. That's How could you do that? But if you kill the child if, while the child is still in the womb, they think, well, that's very good. Helps keep the population down. Hypocritical society. How Srila Prabhupada was shocked how people could be, how a mother could be so unmerciful to her child as to kill the child and the whole, the whole mood of the, what it means to be a mother. What it, in, in Vedic culture, women are addressed as mother and it's expected that every woman has that feeling of compassion and nurturing for the child. And how, how can they kill the child? It's unimaginable. But, it should be unimaginable, but it's become normal in modern society because the quality of mercy, it's uh, one of the pillars of religion, one of the four pillars of religion, which is almost unknown in this Kali Yoga. People, they just think it's completely normal to kill millions of animals. And even in normal dealings, people... There, there's no good feeling between people. They, they deal with each other very roughly. Mm. The mercy is the uh, mercy is the, Krishna's mercy on us, so we can get devotional service. We can get the opportunity with the way we pray. Seva adhikara di karanija dasi. We're praying to Tulsi Devi for her mercy so that we can have the opportunity to serve her, to become her servant, to become servant of Krishna, Radha and Krishna. <clears throat> so our devotional practices, they're required. Shavanam, Kirtanam, regulated principles. But we should understand that it's all to attract Krishna's mercy. It's not that we become, we can't, we can't claim a certificate. Now I got my qualification. We, we're just doing that to try to attract the mercy of Krishna. Because mercy means we can't control it. That by my, by my endeavor, I will force Krishna to give me his mercy. And then that's completely, uh, antithetical to the whole concept of mercy. Mercy means we have to understand we're unqualified. There's nothing we can actually do to force Krishna to give his mercy. Because as soon as we think like that, then we, we don't, then we're not candidates for mercy. Of course, we may think, well, Srila Prabhupada, he wants his books distributed. So let me, let me get Prabhupada's mercy and go and distribute as many books as I can. But it's not that, that it's, Again, it's not mechanical. I'm doing it and definitely Prabhupada now, he's, he's obliged to give me his mercy. That's like the karma mimamsaka idea. That, that you do something and then God has to give you a result. But one symptom of, the, of someone who's eligible for the mercy of Krishna and who's getting the mercy of Krishna is that he thinks himself completely unqualified. It's... Uh, almost paradoxical how such a great devotee as Krishna as Kaviraj Goswami who who uh, by his com the, the very fact that he compiled Chaitanya Charitamrita which is incomparable literary work and he states therein Jagai Madhai Hoiti Muito Papishta he says that I am more sinful than Jagai and Madhai. 
And I'll tell you something now that Prabhupada told his disciples. In the class, when the temple curtain opens or closes, you just go on here. That's all. You can bow down later. So he says, I'm more sinful than Jagai and Madhai, and I am lower than the worm in stool. Anyone who hears my name becomes, they lose their pious activity, and anyone who says my name becomes sinful upon doing so. Now how can he, being such a great devotee, think like that? Well, that's a symptom of his being a great devotee. <laughs> it's inconceivable. How he, how he can think like that? I don't know about all of you, but it's very difficult for me to think that I'm lower than a worm in stool. But unless we think like that, we don't get the mercy of Krishna. He, he be, by that uh, humble attitude, he got the mercy by which he could compose Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. So humility and mercy are very much interlinked. As much as we are humble, we, be, we have the opportunity, or the opportunity to get Krishna. But even then, it's not that I'll become humble, I'll become very humble, I'll become so humble, and then Krishna will have to give me his mercy. It's still, there's no way that we can demand mercy. We can only request it. Like the Chatak bird, the example is given, Rupa Goswami again. The, the Chatak bird is, will only drink water that comes in the rain. As soon as it touches the ground, he's not interested. He's only... So some days he may go on and on and on, weeks and months without rain. Here in Texas also, it's like that sometimes. In India, it's like that. You may go in the hot season, you may go for weeks and weeks and weeks. No rain. But the Chatak bird will only take the water. It will wait, maybe almost dead, but will only take that water. So devotee thinks like that. I may be almost dead, <laughs> but I'll only, I'll only take Krishna's mercy. Some demigod may come and say, well, I can give you my mercy also. Or someone else may come and say, yeah, you can be a Christian and you can get Christ's mercy. No, we want we'll, we'll wait for Krishna's mercy. He gives it or not gives it. That's up to him. If, if, if we think that I, I've done this and then I got the mercy, then it's not mercy. It's something of our own, in our own imagination, it's something of our own doing. So who is qualified for bhakti? Well, shadhavan jan hoi bhakti adhikari. One who is faithful, they are eligible to perform bhakti. But, to get, get Krishna's mercy, there's, what is the qualification? The qualification is to think oneself unqualified. That's the only qualification. But if you think, well I think I'm unqualified, therefore I'm qualified. And again you don't get Krishna's mercy. <laughs> so it, it requires real humility, not some kind of intellectual adjustment, humility. Uh, definitely not by becoming a great renounced yogi or any such thing. There's a description in Chaitanya Bhagavat of one Brahmachari who lived in Navadip when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there. And he requested Srivas Thakur because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would hold Sankirtan all night, every night in the house of Srivas Thakur. And non-devotees, they were not allowed inside. Only for devotees. If non-devotees come, the ecstasy, by the very presence, the, the, the flow of nectar of Harinam will be obstructed. So there was one brahmachari who was very pious, very austere, Brahmin, who he was pio vrata. He only drank milk. He lived on milk alone. He was so austere. He wouldn't take anything else. And he, he requested Srivas, just let me in, I just want to see him dancing once. Let me, let me in. So Srivas, he thought, well, he's very pious and very pure. I know Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
at that time known as Nimai Pandit. He won't like it. But on the other hand, I can't refuse. He's a Brahmin, he's a Brahmachari, he's very austere, he's very pure. So after being asked again and again, Srivas allowed this uh, Brahmin to enter his house before Nimai and all the devotees came and you just hide away in the corner. So the Nimai Pandit came, Gaurahari, with all his devotees, Sari Kirtan, and now after some time Nimai said, something wrong here today. I, I, I don't feel right. Srivas, is there anyone here who shouldn't be here? And then Srivas said, well, actually there's one Brahmin, Brahmachari, very pious, you see, he's, he asked me again and again, I couldn't refuse him. But he's a very pure person. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu pulled him out and chastised him like anything. You rascal, you, you can't get bhakti just by drinking milk. <laughs> yeah. But actually then the Brahmin, he was very, he was very submissive. He didn't say, hey, who do you think you are? I'm a Brahmin. As uh, later on others would do. The Parava Adham, the, the students, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu threatened to beat one Brahmin student, because that Brahmin student gave Chaitanya the Nimai the, the advice, don't chant Gopi Gopi, better you chant the name of Krishna. So this milk drinking Brahmin was very pious, although Lord Chaitanya told him it's not. It's not by drinking milk or performing any austerities that you can, you don't become qualified for devotional service. Dhane jane panditye krishnere nahi pai kebal bhaktiye bosh chaitanya gosha. This verse and verses similar to this, almost the same, they, they occur several times in Chaitanya Bhagavat. Not by money, not by followers and reputation, not by knowledge can one get Krishna. Krishna comes under the control of his devotee, of the devotee, keval bhakti, pure devotion. Mm. So we can't force mercy to come. On the other hand, if there's a little opportunity, then mercy will make its mercy, the mercy of Krishna. He's willing to give it. Why did he give to Putana? Well, in previous life she was the assistant of Bali Maharaj, Vindhyavali, I think. No, 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 was it? Yeah. Was it? No, 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 no. What was it? Uh, I can't remember. Ratna. Ratnavan? I can't remember now. Anyway, when she first saw Vamana when he came, in motherly affection, when Vamana first came in the uh, place where Bali Maharaj was performing sacrifices, she thought, oh, what a beautiful, nice boy. How fortunate is the mother who suckled him at her breast. I would also like to do. So she had motherly feelings toward him. But then, when he revealed himself as Vishnu and took everything away from Bali Maharaj and all the demons, then, she be, then her demoniac nature came out. And she wanted to, uh, you yeah, know, she, she, instead she thought, I don't, I, I, I want to kill him. Hmm. So she got the opportunity to try to kill him in, his, in her next life. But because at one point she had the feeling I want to be like a mother. And because she was intimately related with Bali Maharaj, who is a great devotee, so Krishna gave her the opportunity. He took away the, by killing her, he took away all her sinful, offend, the effects of all her sinful offenses, and Krishna remembered. Oh, she wanted to be, she wanted to be mother. Dhatri means wet nurse which you probably don't know what it means because there aren't such things anymore now. Society has changed, but it means that uh, 
<clears throat> Aristocratic women used to do this. They would hire another woman who had had a child at the same time, someone from working class, or what nowadays we'd call, thanks to Karl Marx, we'd call working class. And she would suckle the baby on behalf of the mother, so that she could just go to parties and this and that. She wouldn't have to bother looking after the kids. So, so that's the position, dhatri. She, she uh, feeds her breast milk to someone else's child. So, uh, this is the position that Putana got because there's. Krishna remembered. Oh, so now all her offenses are gone because I killed her and now she can, she can, uh, I'll fulfill her desire. On the, even on the material platform, we learn from Shastra, uh, mercy is always a good quality. One has to be careful how one Administers it. Of course, most people don't have much opportunity to be merciful. It's only those in high positions can be merciful. Mm. Of course, you can be, we are high in relation to animals, so we can be merciful to them by not killing them and eating them. But uh, among humans, well, the king, he has to be very careful. Who, who are we, who are we merciful to? If you, if you, uh, just like the, the, the mercy plea for the murderer. Someone may plead mercy. Don't, don't put me in prison. So, you know, or they let him out of prison. Often that happens that someone is due to get out of prison and people become very afraid. Charles Manson was supposed to come out of prison. His name was famous in the 1960s, was it? Anyone of, I, even in England, I as a small child knew his name because of his abominable crimes of killing. Uh, he was a, some, some strange cult leader who organized the killing of uh, Roman Polanski, who was a film director, his wife and some others. And it was just some gruesome way of killing. So about two years ago or so, he came up for parole. And people were afraid, don't let him out of prison person like that, you don't want to let him out of prison at all. If he'd have been in Texas, he wouldn't have even made it this far. He would have been executed. So, mercy. They may say, well, it's mercy. Now he's behaved himself well, he's ready for parole. No, no, don't give him mercy. You have to be careful giving mercy. But these kind of things that... that, uh, can be very difficult to decide. Someone who's in a position of authority, how to deal with others. Someone will say that, oh, he's, he's, a, he's an offender, punish him severely. And others say, no, no, give him a chance, he can improve, he can improve, reform. On the material platform also, how to administer money. Because you can't tell what someone's going to do in the future or what will happen in future. So, you have to exercise good judgment as best you can, but you can't actually tell. In the Mahabharata, there's an, there's a, an episode is narrated of how Yudhishthira gave his mercy to Duryodhana, even though Duryodhana had been just the opposite of merciful to Yudhishthira. He, what he did to Yudhishthira was so bad Bhima especially for the whole 13 years they were in exile he was just uh, just just wanting to kill not only Duryodhana even more Dushasana and all the others and he did he vowed I will kill every single one and that's why Arjuna in the fight he several times he had the opportunity to kill different sons of Dhritarashtra said, no, no, I'm not going to kill you. Bhima's going to kill you. Go. <laughs> he let them, that was his mercy. You go now. He's ready to kill them, but no, I'm not going to kill you. Bhima's going to kill you. He vowed. But Yudhishthira, his attitude, it wasn't vengeful. Mm. There was one time when Duryodhana, he was... Uh, 
Even though he'd sent Yudhishthir and the, the, his brothers to the forest, he was he never felt very secure. He was always afraid that they're going to because at any time they could just come out and and say, Hey, forget that we're gonna we're gonna kill you and take over the kingdom, which is what Duryodhana would have done. He wouldn't he would have even if he had lost the match and he was given such a a punishment, he would have never taken it. So he suspected it. So he always kept spies watching Yudhishthira and he found that they've come in their wandering in the forest they've come fairly close to um, Hastinapur, Indraprastha. Mm. So uh, he thought, oh, okay, it's a good opportunity for us. We can go there and show our, our great, show how we are so wealthy and they're just living like beggars, like rishis in the forest. We can humiliate them, rub it in. You know that saying, rub it in? That means to, someone's already suffering and you make them suffer more. That It comes from the idea of when someone's got a, someone's been punished by whipping and they have wounds, lacerations on their back and you rub in some salt, which makes it hurt a lot more. So to rub it in, Duryodhana, he brought all their cows and great show of wealth and he came to where the Pandavas were. But then uh, he came to an area of the forest which was owned by the Gandharvas. And Gandharva said, hey, get out of here. And said, Duryodhana said, you get out of here. And then, then the, the Duryodhana thought, we're so powerful, we don't care for any Gandharvas. But the Gandharvas arrested Duryodhana. They're all tied up. He's all tied up. And uh, from their camp, they, 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 Duryodhana's camp, they sent people to Yudhishthira to say, hey, look, the uh, Duryodhana was coming to show himself off to you. But in the meantime, he got arrested by the Gandharvas. And Bhishma and Arjuna say, hey, this is great. Good. <laughs> we thought that we'd have to, when this exile is over, we'll have to bring all our armies together and have a big fight, but we don't need to. They're, now they're kidnapped. They're arrested by the Gandharvas. The Gandharvas were the Chitrarati, was a friend of Yudhishthira. And uh, Yudhishthira said, no. No, even uh, the Gandharvas are our friends. Duryodhana is acting like an but he's our brother, so it's it's an insult against our whole family. So he said, "Okay, Bhima and Arjun, you go and fight against the, the Gandharvas and release them." <laughs> so they did, <laughs> and that was it. Was actually mercy on Duryodhana to do that. Otherwise, he would be tied up to the present day, probably. Uh, at least until he died. Mm. But uh, that mercy that he gave, that's a, that mer- it wasn't Yudhishthira's plan to do that, but it actually made, it was more humiliating to Duryodhana. If he had remained tied up, that would have been humiliating. But the very fact that, that Bhima and Arjun got him released, that was even more humiliating. We find also Krishna, so many times, 17 times, he defeated Jirasandha, and then said, okay, you go. He didn't bother killing him. You go. It means he's not afraid of him. If you're afraid of an enemy, kill him, finish him off. But if you think he's insignificant, oh, Jirasandha, oh, I defeated you again. Okay, go, go, go. And then again, Jirasandha comes back with a big army this time, and you defeat him again. Okay, go, 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 go. It shows that it's... Uh, a mercy, but it's in that sense, it's very humiliating. If he'd killed him, it would have shown it would have been better for the Kshatriya's reputation if he's killed in the fight. But if he's released, that means he just he's just considered in he's so insignificant that just let him go. And anyway, he can come back again, and I'll defeat him again. It doesn't. You're not worried about him. <clears throat> But anyway, that's an example of how Yudhishthir, he, is, uh, he didn't think that, that Duryodhana has been just the opposite of merciful to us. He's been nasty in the, in the meanest way imaginable. But anyway, we should, he's our brother, we should try to help him. Such a, 
saintly quality of Yudhishthira. We should, we should hear these things. Children nowadays, they grow with what? What, what do they grow up with? I, I can't even imagine some imaginary beings zapping them in a computer program. Nothing, nothing for building character. But if we hear the uh, Rama and Yudhishthira and great personalities, then that will form good character. <clears throat> so we see here, Yudhishthira was very merciful and Duryodhan. Well, if we think of uh, one among his many, many great qualities, if we think of Yudhishthira's great qualities, we can see what is prominent is mercy, attitude of mercy. And not wanting to take revenge. He did eventually. He was, he was obliged to do so. But it wasn't out of spite or out of grudge that he fought. But simply to perform his duty. He said, I have to fight because as a Kshatriya, I need to have a kingdom. Otherwise I can't perform my dharma of being a Kshatriya. And Duryodhana clearly said he won't even give enough land to put a pin in, so I have to fight. But otherwise, out of grudge, he he didn't have any, he didn't maintain, he didn't harbor bad feelings. Whereas Duryodhana was simply proud, completely proud. So mercy, if one has that attitude of being merciful to others, of, of wanting to benefit others. That attracts the mercy of Krishna. And if we're proud, even in our ordinary dealings, then Krishna, he'll never be pleased. In Brahma Vaivarta Purana, there's a statement that someone who is proud, it's as if there are insurmountable mountains between us and Krishna. Ah. <coughs> So we should see. Of course, we think, how can I be merciful? I'm just insignificant. But we should think that Krishna, he's been very merciful to us. He's given us the opportunity to chant his holy names, to engage in devotional service. Everyone is suffering in this world for lack of knowledge, of Krishna, this world is the place of suffering, dukhalayam, simply suffering. So when we meet people, we should be merciful. It's very easy to just reject others and be scornful of them. Some scorn, not even, but uh, scorn in the sense of understand their position. It's it's abominable. That may be. There. We we see Srila Prabhupada. He would often talk about how the the karmis are just uh, how they're spoiling their lives, how they're hypocritical. Uh, so we sh- we shouldn't, in the name of being merciful, we shouldn't have this uh, incorrect understanding that well everyone's good, everyone's nice, everything's wonderful. It's not uh, the, the word. People are living lives, sinful lives. We should know that. But at the same time, when we say they're sinful, our attitude shouldn't be simply to condemn, but to try to help them. We, we can't sort out all their miseries. People have so many, so many problems, and you know, personal problems, and family problems, and financial problems, and legal problems, and addiction problems, and health problems. And, we can't sort it all out, but we can be merciful to them by giving them knowledge by which they can get free from all sufferings by coming to Krishna. Give them, give them Prabhupada's books. Sometimes people don't take books, even we offer it to them, but still we can at least say Hare Krishna to them. And, uh, very least we can try and leave a good impression so they they may uh, take a book next time. <laughs> or at least hear the holy name of Krishna. At least not become inimical. 
toward the devotees. So even if we consider ourselves very low, which we should consider ourselves, but at the same time we should recognize that we have the opportunity to be merciful because Krishna has been merciful to us and, give, and given us the opportunity, the opportunity to engage in devotional service. And Krishna wants that we extend that opportunity to others also. So in that way we can be merciful. Uh, and we, we interact with others. We, that means we have to tolerate also because people often act in ways which we don't like. That people often act in uh, obnoxious ways especially if we try to preach to them. They may get upset, uh, but a devotee has to be very tolerant. Mm. And if, if we're not trying to give out the mercy, then we start to think that, well, I'm just so, I'm so, I'm so great, these karmis are so useless, and we forget where we came from ourselves. <laughs> we are also in the, in the pit of, lowest pit of material existence, and Krishna, through the agency of his devotees, Srila Prabhupada, they, they picked us up. Um, in the Bhagavatam, in the fourth canto, there's a statement, I'll just read it out. Dayaya sarva bhute shu santushya yena kena va savindriyo prashantya cha chushyatya shu janadam. By showing mercy to all living entities, being satisfied somehow or other. Very difficult to be satisfied, especially in the modern world. Somehow or other, ye santushya yena kenava, and controlling the senses from sense enjoyment, one can very quickly satisfy the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Janadam. So the devotee feels himself very humble. He wants to attract the mercy of Krishna, which comes to the devotees, and he also wants to uh, share that mercy with others. So the devotee thinks that I'm simply living on mercy. I have no personal qualification, but he also tries to share that with others. But then, if we are egoistic, then the whole flow of mercy becomes stopped. Neither do we get the mercy and neither can we give it to others. So let us remember the all-merciful Krishna uh, and Kangvadaya Lung Sharanam Brajema. Who who other than Krishna shall we take shelter of? Last night there were some bhajans going on here for Ganesh. But we don't worship Ganesh. We actually we worship Ganesh. We should all worship Ganesh. Fully surrender to Ganesh. Ganesh means Krishna. Gana. He's the Isha. So that the real Ganesh is Krishna. But worshipping the demigod Ganesh, no, that's that's not Krishna consciousness. Then we don't get the mercy of Krishna. <laughs> we may get the mercy of Ganesh for some supposed material benefits, but that is that in itself is misleading. So, one symptom of the real mercy of Ganesh is when we're no longer interested in worshipping him and we want to worship Krishna only. That, that's real mercy, if we can understand that. But people take the mercy that Sankhata Mocha, but there's no, the Sankhata Mocha means getting free from all troubles and in this world, but there's no, it's just an illusion. You get free from one and you get another one. The real way to get free from them all is Mame kam sharanam raja to surrender fully to Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any question or comment about this, please? Yes. Maharaj, uh, I, all right, I'll see him first. He's older. Older than you. Look, hmm? I have other questions, but this. Not on this verse? Not on this class? Yes, the uh, question is that at the end you said they worship the nation, the nation is Krishna. No, Ganesh is Krishna means Ganesh is the name of Krishna. I didn't, I, let me clarify that. I'm not saying that all the demigods and Krishna are all the same. I'm saying that the name Ganesh most properly applies to Krishna. Because Ganesh means the Lord of all the people. So that name is 
best applied to Krishna. All these names. Indra means king. So the, the first original Indra is Krishna. Shiva means auspicious. Shankara means who makes auspiciousness. So this name properly applies to Krishna. Not that we say that Krishna and the demigods are all the same. Let me clarify that. Is that what you want to clarify? No, uh, but side by side, uh, you are saying that Ganesh mercy is temporary, you know, it's not... Uh, it's, uh, well, the kind of mercy that people approach Ganesh for is temporary. It's, uh, it's material for material benefit, which is insignificant and meaning, meaningless. Uh, what is that in Gita? Krishna says, "Antavatu palante shantad bhavatyalpa meta." Some people approach demigods to get some temporary benefit because they're foolish. Krishna says, but they get the result. Kang shanta karmanam siddhim yajanta ihadevata. Krishna also as it says in Bhagavad Gita, "Kshipram hi manushela." Okay, siddhim bhavati karmaja. Krishna says that people worship demigods <coughs> because they want material benefits and they get it quickly by doing so. But then he also says, Antavattu Pala, they get whatever benefit they get is temporary. It's foolishness. <laughs> you had a question, Prabhu? Yes, ma'am. Um, oh, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. In your discussion, you were speaking about how qualified persons, the mm. people that feel that they are qualified, and they get humble, um, are recipients. Sorry, I didn't are, are the recipients of Christmas mercy? Or do they actually feel themselves humble or do they have no qualification? One who is humble, uh, is, well, that in itself is a symptom of Krishna's mercy. And one who cultivates or, or has such an attitude they, Krishna reciprocates with that, but the point is he's not forced to. Hmm. It's not that Krishna is forced to give his mercy. All, generally he will, but it's not that he's bound to. It's not that you think I'll become very humble and Krishna will give his mercy. Actually that if one is very humble and devoted, Krishna, his heart is so soft that when he sees that someone has no motive other than to serve him, then Krishna becomes as if obliged to help that devotee. Because that's Krishna's own nature. He's very compassionate. He comes under the <clears throat> control of, of someone who's a devotee. That's stated there, that... Uh, Mm. Krishna becomes under the control of a devotee who gives himself to the process of devotional service. But the point is that Krishna, he's not obliged. There's nothing we can do to oblige him. But actually if, if our heart becomes crying out for Krishna in hopelessness, then he is as if obliged, just like when the when the baby is crying out for the mother, the mother doesn't think, well, I'll just let the baby go. Well, maybe nowadays they do, but... <laughs> I, I heard of some people, they used to give the child, they feed the child milk mixed with whiskey, and so the child would go to sleep and stop crying. And then they could go out for some party or something like that. I used to hear such things in Ireland, people. But uh, the mother, she doesn't, she doesn't think. She, then the the logical process, she doesn't think, but she goes immediately. The child is crying. Let us. She she runs immediately. There's no runs immediately to pacify the child to try to help the child. I think it's different culture here. I 
And uh, that culture isn't there at all. The child's crying, the mother tends to think it's just a nuisance. How to stop it? You don't think the child's suffering, how to help the child? I had a very good education. I spent some years in... You know, people ask, where did you get your education? I got my education. Was it Cambridge or Oxford or Harvard? My, mine was in Bangladesh. In a university, but not in a university, in the villages where everyone was illiterate. I got my best education <laughs> to see actually what a mother is. I, I learned there, <laughs> among other things. Yeah. Anyway, Hare Krishna. The other day I said something like this and all the women became very upset. So. <laughs> should learn to keep my mouth shut. Should I? I don't know. <laughs> who, will, who will even hear this? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Women are not supposed to say sannyas, but we're not the body. Okay, but uh, there's some practical dealings within this material world also. You're not the body, so go and uh, go and embrace one tiger. It's also not the body. There's some as long as we're in this world, there's some practical dealings. So women are not supposed to take some. Where is where's that book? Women, masters, or mothers? You'll get the full answer in there. <laughs> Krishna also, while teaching that we're not the body, he also teaches that as long as we're not fully aware that we're not the body, we should uh, act in terms of the Varnashram system, which is for regulating life. The main purpose of the Varnashram system is so we can get free from sexual attraction. That's the big plan behind it. So therefore there are different roles for men and women. It's actually a very easy thing for people to understand unless they've been messed up by growing up in America, for instance. People can't understand even very basic things like this. Yeah. It's not a question, it's more like uh, they're ready to put a dozen bullets in your head. It doesn't, it's not really a question that they're trying to understand. It's the, if, if you even suggest that men and women should have different roles and the woman's role should be like that of a mother and uh, submissive and chaste and shy, well that's enough to get you put in the same category as Hitler. You're, you're evil for even thinking such a thing. So, uh, yeah, it's a very, very uh, misguided so-called civilization proud of their big buildings. No character. There's, there's no, no such thing as building character. America is the epitome of the statement in Srimad Bhagavatam of this symptom of Kali Yoga. Vitam eva kala nam uh, what is that? Janma guna what is it? Vitam eva kala Janma Guno Daya, I can't remember it exactly, but the point is that uh, in Kali Yuga, one will be considered aristocratic and uh, very highly placed and everything good if he has money, that's all. However you get the money doesn't matter, but if you have money then you're considered very high class. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada.